Hello, I'm Ann Kobayashi, and I am back after a very long time. I've been doing school for the last four months, and I've been incredibly busy, and I had issues with editing, and so I'm going to go over the books that I read in the last four months that I have not reviewed, but I have been active on Goodreads still. So I'm going to review by stars. So my first star books are books that I just did not like. Sadly, my favorite book of 2017 was... The Giver, which was an amazing book by Lois Lowry, and it covered great stuff. And in companion novel, I was really excited about reading it, and that was Gathering Blue. And it was just really boring. The one really good thing that I loved about it was called Ableism, and since the main character was proving that she was useful even though she had a disability. But my two star books are probably one of my most highly given rating. They're books that are good, but I just don't, probably wouldn't reread them. I have the first two novels of Sega, this is actually the third, but I loved these. I loved the quotes. It's One of the quotes was, um, once upon a time each of us was somebody's kid, and it tells a story of these two people that are on opposite sides of a civil war and they end up getting married and having a child, and it's narrated by the children, and it's the first graphic novel I've ever read, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't like every part of it, and I thought that it was over-sexualizing women, which was my major issue with it. My next two star ones was Habitudes by Tim Elmore, How to Talk to Girls at Parties by Neil Gaiman. It's a short story. The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. It was one of my last reads of 2017. It was very raw and real. However, it wasn't really my style of writing. I have Eleanor in Park. I thought it was a cute misfit romance. However, the quotes was, the trying was so disgusting. And I was like, can you stop getting mad at women for wanting to look nice, that's not a crime and it's not disgusting, so was The Wrath and the Dawn, which was such beautiful writing. It was mesmerizing. The characters were annoying and the plot was generic. There wasn't anything special. My three star books are books that are well done. They're beautiful and I would probably reread them and enjoy them again. First one on here, they, they both die at the end. So my quote for this one is, you may be born into family, but you walk into friendship. I thought it was a very well done book. It was a 2017 release. My next one was Graceling by Kristen Cressor. I liked a lot of things about this book, but every single one of them would pretty much have to do with spoilership. One thing that isn't spoilery about it is that the magic system was wonderful. The Philosopher's Stone I finished this year. It's my first Harry Potter book and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that she tackled themes. The Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare, of course. I loved this play. Um, the greatness quotes. It was funny. The better to be a witty fool than to have a foolish wit. Third graphic novel in the Sega series by Brian K. Vaughn. I really enjoyed it as well. My next novel that I read was The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. I actually watched the Netflix series and I was like, this is amazing, I need to read it now, and it was it was great. My next one is The Three Dark Thrones by Kendar Blake. It was very disappointing to what it was given. It was not that, um, it's not very political and the girls aren't that witty or wise or deadly, they're just kind of eh. I actually ended up just finishing the second book. Really not that great of a series, but the first book by itself was not that bad and I enjoyed the end, which is why it bumped up. Next one was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This book read to me when I was a little girl, so I reread it. The final three-star rating was Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw. I thought this book was very well done. My next one is my four-star novel. These are books that are above exception. They're amazing, they're outstanding, they're great. First one on this one is Aristotle and Dante Discover Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allaire Sands. Probably butchered that name. You don't always have to understand the people you love as one of them. I just love Aries depth of understanding and his questioning about things. I think he really represented what a lot of people feel and a lot of people have. This one is Venus and Adonis by William Shakespeare. It's This is the complete collection of poems, so it's actually the first one in here. Wordplay was wonderful. Raven Boys by Maggie Stradivater, butchering that name. This is actually the second one, but I don't own the first one. So it's intelligently written. It was my first actual paranormal book, and I'm definitely excited to read more paranormal books now. Riddles All the Way Down by John Green. I absolutely loved this book. I think John Green wrote it in a way that can only be written by someone who has gone through mental illness that he has. He writes about OCD and anxiety, which is what he's experienced, so he writes it with such truth that it's heartbreaking and yet beautiful at the same time. One of my favorite quotes from it was, I could never slay the dragon because 
It Was Me. I have What I Lost by Alexandra Billard. I did a total review of this in August. Study in Charlotte. Brittany Cavallaro. I absolutely loved this book and just reading the quotes again made me mesmerized. I was like, you met, you became friends, you found yourself a murder, which is the funny thing on it. And then this one, which I love. I was so used to her fearfulness that I couldn't recognize her fear. So beautiful. The writing is so mesmerizing and yet it's not done in the way The Wrath and the Dawn, which is also beautiful, but kind of over the top. It's just beautiful writing. He's Jamie Watson, who's the great-grandson of John Watson, and she's Charlotte Holmes. So rich and beautiful. I definitely recommend it. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me again after so many months, and I hope that you have a great new year.